Okay, thank you for joining us. In today's lesson, we will be looking at exam practice question number one for Prop 1024. So let's take a look at this question here. Question number one, George Parrott, the owner of Friends Development Co. is in need of an interest accruing construction loan with progress advances. George anticipates that he will need to make five draws on the loan as follows. End of month one, he'll need 110,000. End of month two, 75,000. End of month five, 21,000. End of month eight, 7,000. End of month 10, 3,000. The Fraser Bank of BC has agreed to George's schedule and requires a return of J2 equals 12% on its construction loans. How much will the Friends Development Co. owe at the end of the 10th month? Okay, so uh, just, let's just talk about this question for a minute before we get into the solution. So George uh, Parrott here is, it uh, looks like he's a, a builder. He needs a construction loan to, looks like, build a house. So when you're uh, building a house, you know, and you're getting construction financing, the bank doesn't advance the whole amount of the loan immediately because you don't need all that money all at once. What you have to do is, you know, homes are built in stages. So usually with construction loans, there's a number of advances that are done throughout the life of the construction period, during the life of the construction period. So, you know, if like if you're t talking about a typical home, usually a home takes about 12 to 18 months to complete and a bank might advance four or five different draws during that time period to help fund the, um, the builder. So the builder doesn't want the entirety of the loan amount, say if you know, you know, whatever amount, a million dollars, the builder's approved for a million dollar construction loan. The builder doesn't want that whole million dollars all at once because he or she will start paying interest on it as soon as it's advanced. So what builders do is they draw up the funds in stages. So when they're ready for the next advance, you know, they've completed the foundations and they're ready to, you know, build the first floor, then they'll go back to the bank and ask for some more money. And in, in addition to using some of their own capital along the way. So uh, th that's what this uh, problem is referring to, this construction loan here. It's an interest accruing construction loan. So, you know, interest accruing, accrue means to collect, to store up. So interest is stored up, is collected, and uh, there's no payments during the life of that construction loan. Everything is paid in full. All the principal and all the interest accrued is paid in full at the end of the, of the, um, the loan term. So in this case, that's at the end of the 10th month uh, right here. We're told at the end of the 10th month. So this is our draw schedule here. This is how much is advanced. So basically to solve this, you're going to have to calculate a whole bunch of future values to come up with the solution. So I've started uh, the... Uh, started the solution for this question already. So, you know, our first step uh, is to convert uh, J2 equals 12% to a J12 rate. We're dealing in uh, monthly periods here. So uh, you can't uh, you can't use a J2 rate for these uh, terms here because it just won't work out. So we're going to convert J2 uh, equals 12%. We're going to find the equivalent J12 rate. And then once we have that, we can go ahead and find our future values here for the uh, various draws. So let's do. Let's start with the conversion first. Okay. So I will first convert the interest rate. So we'll go shift clear all. Remember, it's always a good practice to go shift clear all before you start any question. So we'll go 12, shift, nom, 2, shift, PYR, shift, effective, and we get to 12.36 as our J1 rate. 12.36 is our J1 rate. 
So now we have to convert that J1 to a J12 rate. So we'll go 12, shift, PYR, shift, nominal. And so we get uh, J12 equals 11.71. 055%. So we've converted our rate from a J2 rate, found the equivalent J12 rate. And so once we've done that, we can move on to step two and do all the individual future value ca calculations here. Okay, so I've uh, organized this in a user-friendly grid. So here are our, here are our cash flows or our draws, I guess. These are our draws, 110,000, 75,000, 21,000, 7,000, and 3,000. Our N will be the difference between the draw month. So in this case, the end of month one. So we'll bring that forward, find the future value as of the end of month 10. So that's nine periods, the $75,000, the N for that is eight periods, and so on and so on. Pretty straightforward there. Once we've converted the interest rate, we don't have to worry about that for the individual calculations. It's already in our calculator, so that's all done. We'll just have to change our PVs as we go along here. And uh, payment will be zero, PYR done, then solve for future value. So pretty straightforward once you get the, um, once you know what you're uh, looking for. Okay, so let's enter in, um, 9n. We'll start here with the first draw, 9n. Uh, we don't have to worry about IYR. Our PV is 110,000. So I'll make that my present value. Zero payment. And solve for future value. I get uh, $120,047 and about uh, close to five cents. So that $110,000 draw in uh, month one turns into $120,000 um, nine, nine periods thereafter. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to press arrow M, arrow M to put that into memory. Remember when you're entering in a series of um, cash flows, when you're taking a running total, you're entering in a series of uh, future values uh, to get the first your first number into your memory, you press arrow M, and then uh, M plus uh, thereafter. Okay, so that's in our memory. If I go clear and RM, there's 120,000, so proof positive, I'm good. Okay, so then I'll enter in 8N, and all I have to do is update my PV to 75,000. So this is the second draw, $75,000 PV. Press future value, I get negative $81,059. So I'll add that to my running total here. This time I'm going to press M plus, M plus. There we go. Third draw is 21,000 over five compounding periods. So I'll go 5N, 21,000. PV, press future value. And I get to $22,000. So I'll press uh, M plus again. Next, $7,000. Well, I'll enter, I should probably start with a two. So my N is two, two N, and then 7,000 is my PV. And I solve for future value by pressing FV, and I get 7,137, so I'll press M plus, just to add that to my running total. And then the, um, the final draw for $3,000, well, we don't have to do any calculations for that because that's advanced in the 10th month. And uh, at the end of the 10th month, and this um, 
this construction mortgage is paid off at the end of the 10th month. So all I have to do is add the $3,000. So I'll just go RM to recall my running total. So I'll go RM here and I get to 230,288. So I don't have to do a future value calculation for the $3,000. I'm just going to add it by subtracting it, of course. So minus 3,000 equals, so I get an outstanding balance. After I've subtracted, I guess subtracted the $3,000 from my running total, I get a, um, a future value equal to negative 23328 eight point uh, around up to four three so that's the future value of this construction mortgage let's just um, go to the answer guide and make sure we're right here so future value so you can find this on your course resources page so future value indeed is two three three two eight four three and uh, this is a um, pretty straightforward four marks. So re as a reminder, please show all your calculations. The more calculations you show, the more marks I can give you when it comes to the exam. And um, the other way of doing this is by using the uh, cash flow key and using NPV and uh, shift swap, using the swap key, NPV and cash flows. Uh, I can't do it on my calculator here because the simulator calculator um, doesn't doesn't have the setup for that. But uh, we've done that in class. So either way, you'll come to the same answer. So I uh, hope that uh, was helpful for you. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. We'll see you on the next question. Thank you very much.